Mark, thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, it's thanks great for to having me, Morgan. It's great to speak with you. You just came out of this White House uh, roundtable discussion about health care costs. What did it entail? What was your message? Well, the goal of the, the panel was to look at why health care, particularly pharmaceutical prices, are so high and the role of middlemen in pushing those prices up. And, you know, as you already know, Morgan, there's three big PBM companies that really distort pricing for healthcare and, and pharmaceuticals specifically. And I got to dump on them a little bit, so that was fun. <laughs> so when you say dump on them, I guess what, what does that mean in terms of the message that you brought to that room today and what you'd like to see happen or change in terms of policy? Sure. So, you know, some of the things that the big three, big three PBMs do is they set formularies based off of rebates. So, for example, the number one prescribed drug is Humira. And they can charge $8,000 a month for Humira to self-insured employers and insurance companies. When there's biosimilars like Usimary from Coheris that we charge on costplusdrugs.com $594 per month. We could save companies millions of dollars, cash pay, um, patients millions of dollars, but they won't do that. There's other examples where they just are destroying independent and community pharmacies where they'll reimburse. So let's just say Eliquis as an example. The community pharmacy might pay, I'm just picking a number, $500 per, um, per, um, cert, per monthly um, delivery of Eliquist. And rather than reimbursing them for the full amount that they pay, they'll reimburse them $400 or less. And we see that even worse with Wagovi and some of the, the semiglutides. And the list is just on and on of things that pharmaceutical benefit um, managers do for themselves at the expense of patients and self-insured companies. And the craziest part is, and the, the message really that I wanted to get across, these big three pharmacy benefit managers, there's nothing unique about them. There is nothing that they do that so many of the independent and small transaction-based rebate-free um, PBMs do that couldn't do the same thing, right? It's so, you know, the message that um, I really wanted to send to self-insured employers in particular is stop using your big three PBM. Go to your employee benefits consultant and ask them, why are you sending me to one of these big three companies and why are they paying you on the back end for you to send me there when I could be saving an untold amount of money for my employees and for the company itself. It's just insane the way the system works right now. And costplusdrugs.com is just pushing away to change it. Yeah, and along those lines, I mean, you, you launched Cost Plus Drugs, what, two years ago. You've got thousands of generic drugs on the platform. How many patients do you have? How many insurance companies are, are you working with? How many hospitals? How many, I guess, regular companies, too? We work with everybody and anybody. I mean, we've got millions of scripts that we've delivered, um, probably a couple million patients now. I mean, our numbers, we're sending records almost every single week. And so our biggest challenge is just keeping up with the volume. We're about to release, um, we're about to open up our manufacturing plant this week where we'll be releasing sterile injectables um, for generics that are on short supply. So you hear all about the pediatric cancer drugs that kids can't get in hospitals. So we're gonna start shipping those, um, shipping sterile injectables and then the pediatric cancer, pediatric cancer drugs in about two months. So we're trying to cover all the bases. Interesting. When I hear you talking about launching manufacturing, what is it taking to stand up that production line? And do you have plans to do others? Yeah, I mean, it costs a lot. And so our production line is robotically driven. So we can change from one injectable to the next every four hours. So we're able to meet the demand of shortages. And, and that's the mission of, of the factory. Now, we're, we don't have unlimited capacity. So once we can get this up and running, then we'll look at ways that we can expand it so that there, you know, if we do this right over the next five years, there will no longer be any more shortages in sterile injectables. So as you do have thousands of generic drugs on the platform, do you have access to enough of them and enough of the products that you're looking to offer to consumers? Yeah, for, yeah I mean, you never. We, the goal is to get every single drug we're legally allowed to sell. We have 2,500 generics, which is pretty much all of them. And we've got probably 10 different brand manufacturers that we're working with. But it's hard to add the brands because those big three PBMs are telling the brands don't work with costplusdrugs.com. So that's our biggest challenge. It's interesting. You mentioned Wegovi before, the GLP-1s. How is that changing the equation around health care costs, especially at a time where I think there are many companies and many CEOs that are awakening to the fact that these are high-cost drugs, that it's hard to get people off of them, and maybe the cost paradigm is shifting uh, for patients? Yeah, I mean, look, they're just hard to come by because they can't even make enough for all that they're selling. I mean, doctors are prescribing more than they can make, and 
That's just a supply and demand issue. How it plays out over time, I'm the wrong person to ask. You know, I think we're going to get from injectables to um, single to just simple drugs. So it'll be a lot easier and that'll allow more to be manufactured. So I don't I don't have a direct answer, mm. but it's something that we'll carry as soon as we can. Is cost plus drugs making money yet? No, we're not making money yet, but that's OK. You know, we're changing an industry. We're saving patients. I mean, we're taking I, Morgan. I can give you example after example, a drug like a matnib where, you know, you might have to walk into a, a CVS and they'll charge you two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars. And depending on the strength, you can get for twenty one dollars from cost plus drugs. A drug like Droxidopa, same type of story. Ten thousand dollars for three months down to thirty dollars a month from costplusdrugs.com. Just example after example after example. So I may not be making money yet. I will be. This will be self-sustaining. But the impact we're having is just incredible. Yeah. I asked about whether you have enough drugs. Do you have enough workers? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got I mean, our biggest challenge is just adding more brands. And as we add more brands, you know, we're going to continue just to change the industry more and more and more. You built your first major company in the 90s. You sold broadcast.com to Yahoo in 1999 at a time where we've seen market pundits uh, debating about whether this feels like 1999. Uh, I wonder what your thoughts are in terms of what we're seeing in the market right now. Yeah, I don't think so. You're not seeing, you know, IPOs for crazy companies because they have a website. So I don't I don't think we're at a point where we're at a bubble. But, you know, you are seeing more and more people just dive into the the, the magic seven or whatever they're calling them now, the top seven stocks. So that creates a little bit of risk, but they're good companies. And so, you know, while I think there's risk in the market being top heavy, I don't think we're anything like what we saw in 99 and 2000 and 2001. How do you see this new AI era? It's a beast. There's only two types of companies in this world, Morgan, those who are great at AI and everybody else. If you don't know AI, you are going to fail, period, end of story. Whether you are an employee, you're going to have to understand it, impact how it impacts your job or how you can use it to be better at your job. Same, if you're a student, the same thing. And if you're a CEO, you can't just say, OK, I'm going to get my, my tech guys to understand it and educate me on it. You have to understand it because it will have significant impact on every single thing that you do. There's no avoiding it. Yeah, and of course, we're seeing that from a policy debate standpoint, too. If you were in charge of regulating it, what would be the first thing you'd do? Um, you can't regulate it. You know, there's just... It's it's brains driven. It's not policy driven. You know, the smartest people around the world are trying to come up with new ways to le le leverage AI to create everything from military all the way down to every application you can think of. And there's no way you're going to start somebody, you know, working in a garage again um, from being able to manipulate AI the way they want it. You just can't legislate that at all. What you can do is develop strong relationships with everybody in the industry and communicate with them because it is strategic for the United States of America. We have to be able to win the battle. We also have, you know, going back to immigration, I'm not talking about policy. We have to be able to have the best and brightest around the world who know AI want to come to the United States of America to contribute. Because if it gets into an adversary's hand, you know, bad things can happen. Mm. With Bitcoin testing a new all-time high right now, your thoughts on this crypto rally, and I guess just as importantly, since you've been outspoken about it in the past, how much your portfolio is in cryptocurrency? Um, I don't even know how much, but it's happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Bitcoin in particular and Ether, um, net, um, ETH to a, a smaller extent, Bitcoin is just driven by supply and demand. There's only going to be 21 million of them. The more people that buy and the fewer people that sell, that means the price is going to go up. That's just the nature of it. it it's a great store of value. That's why I have an investment in it, you know, because I do feel that the demand is going to um, exceed the number of people selling. ETH, we'll see what happens with um, the ETF and whether or not that gets approved. But because of the way it works, it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more driven by utility. But there's more and more applications coming for the utility. The biggest the biggest disappointment of crypto so far has been there's not that one application where you you go to your grandma and she says, I got to get this new crypto app because all my friends are using it. Kind of like we saw in the early days of apps with Instagram. Um, hmm. We need that transitional application for um, for crypto to be ubiquitous. But until then, just from an investment perspective, I'm investing in Bitcoin over gold all day, every day. And I've said that for years. Mm. OK, so you've sold your majority stake in the Mavericks. It's your last season on Shark Tank. You're disrupting healthcare. What's next? Healthcare, 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 healthcare. Right. I mean, 
The, it's the only company I've ever put my name on, Mark Cuban, Cost Plus Drugs. I encourage everybody to go to costplusdrugs.com and just put in the medications that you're taking. If you're an employer, I implore you to start learning about your health care costs. After employee costs, health care costs is your number two cost in your company. But most CEOs don't understand it at all. And let me just tell you, to speak directly to the CEOs, those rebates that you're getting from the PBMs, they're not paid for by the manufacturers like they're telling you. The rebates that you're getting are paid for by your sickest employees and your oldest employees. So rather, those rebates could be used to pay for those employees' medications and care or pay for the chronic illnesses they have to pay for the medications every single month. But instead, you're putting those on your balance sheet. That will backfire for you. Go to a smaller PBM that doesn't do rebates. Go to costplusdrugs.com, compare your prices, Go to your um, insurance company and tell them you want to take, you know, Usimri instead of Humira. If you're a company with, you know, a thousand employees, just switching one drug from Humira to Usimri can save you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Health CEOs have got to start paying attention to their health care costs. Mm. Just having it run under HR and the CFO is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. And I think there's going to be a real trend towards hiring healthcare specific CFOs because there's that much money and there's that much money that can be saved. Mm. Final question for you, Mark. You've said before you're not running for president. Given the complexities of where we stand as a nation right now, the positions you've taken publicly, what would it take for you to reconsider sometime? You know, my kids are 14, 17, and 20, Morgan, and that's time I'm never going to get back. Mm -hmm. um, in this crazy world and how they treat families and how they treat the kids of, of people running, there's just no way I'd put them through that. And, you know, when I'm 105, hopefully on my dying, you know, deathbed, I'm not going to think back, or should I have run for president? I'm going to think back about all those memories I had with my kids while they were still in their teenage years. Mm -hmm. Well said. Mark Cuban, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, Morgan. I appreciate it.